welcome to another Outside the Box Reviews. Today we are looking at the Wolfman and Creature from the Black Lagoon Mini Mates 2-Pack. And don't adjust your sets, this is in black and white. Well, I guess not really, but this is the Toys R Us exclusive black and white set of these Mini Mates. And I have to comment first off, with almost every review I do on here, I have my camera on a tripod to film this. Didn't really work for this one. I have the camera on a very, very thin book. And that was enough to be able to get these guys into frame. They are very, very tiny. If you're not familiar with Mini Mates, they're very little guys. They kind of remind me of uh, Lego Men. It's actually the first set of Mini Mates I've ever picked up. I basically got them for free due to stacking coupon codes online, which was really freaking awesome. I've been curious about Mini Mates for a long time, but this is the first chance I've actually had to pick them up. I think they're a little overpriced, so getting them for free kind of made it worth experimenting and seeing how they really are. We'll see, maybe this will be another thing that I'm adding to my collection. So there's a whole wave of the horror Mini Mates that came out in fall of 2010, and they were all based on either Creature from the Black Lagoon or The Wolfman the original film. All the other sets were in color. There were four packs of all four of the characters. There were two packs, which are the normal ones. You'd get the Wolfman and Larry Talbot, and you'd get the Creature from the Black Lagoon, and I can't remember who the guy is. Doctor something or other. I haven't watched the movie in a while. But the, uh, the mean scientist dude. You'd get him with the creature, then there were two Toys R Us exclusive packs. There was this one, and there was a pack that had a Wolfman in the transformation shirt where he's wearing the tank top while he's turning into the Wolfman, as opposed to when he's finished transforming, he magically gets a shirt back, and most of the time you see him as the Wolfman, he actually has a shirt back on. And it also came with a glow-in-the-dark creature from the Black Lagoon. Honestly, when I was looking to get something for my uh, stackable coupons. It was either or on those sets and I picked this version because I think it's obviously a little more true to the movie as opposed to the other thing that was just kind of... The Wolfman was true to the movie but the creature was really weird looking. That glow-in-the-dark paint. It just looks like he was poorly painted. I'm sure it probably looked cool if he was glowing but it just looked wrong. So to start off, we're going to take a look at the Wolfman. Now, Mini Mates are pretty much the same from what I've seen. They basically use the same bodies, and then when they have extra things on them, they use certain little standard tricks to modify them. So the main body of this is pretty standard for Mini Mate. The same legs, the same torso, and the same arms. The hands and feet are unique. There's little Wolfman paws here. I think the feet are really cute looking. It is really goofy and kind of oversized. I like that. And then every other detail on them is done with paint. The head is actually a mask, I guess you'd call it. It sits over just a generic cylinder. Most of the time they'll use this for the face and it'll be painted on here. But this one's just a cap that sits over that. It's nice that they did that. It gives it a little more shape. You get the poof at the top of the hair, and you had the little ears on the side. It's pretty nice. The detail on it's not bad at all either, especially for what you're getting. I mean, obviously you're not going to get super realistic detail, but the hands are well detailed. They have the extra fur, the little claws, there's four fingers there, three toes, little tufts of hair coming out. I'm sure in color you probably pick up a little bit more of the detail. And there's just some painted on tears in his pants and on his sleeves, on the front of his shirt. You can see the detail of the shirt itself and some more tears. And not really anything to speak of on the back. Just a gray back and copyright information on his pants. He also comes with his cane, the iconic Wolfman cane. It's pretty nicely detailed for being so small. You could actually make out the wolf's head on the end of it and 
if you look really hard, it might just be my imagination, but it almost looks like you could see the, the pentagram on the side. Very hard to see, but I think it is there. He doesn't really hold this. I mean, you could put it in this hand here. It's more or less that you'd have to, like, line it up with this open part of his hand and push it in. It doesn't really like to go. I mean, he kind of will hold it. I don't think he's meant to. His other hand's too big. I don't think he uh, ever held the cane as the Wolfman. Um, if I got the set that had the Larry Talbot in it, you know, him before he's a Wolfman, it would have been kind of interesting to see if he would have held this, because if he would have held it, it would be a really nice accessory, because he's the one who uses it. But either way, I mean, it's kind of nice that it came with it. He could have come with nothing. Very possible. So it is nice that it comes with something. As for articulation, both of these have the same articulation, so we'll just get it out of the way here. He has a ball-jointed head. His arms are ball-jointed as well. You get a pretty good range of motion out of them. And you could swivel them. They're a little stiff. I don't want to mess with it too much. You could bend at the elbow. You could rotate at the wrist. Rotate at the waist. And separate at the waist if you're not careful. The legs will go out to the side, up front. I guess they're basically ball jointed there as well. Bend at the knee and swivel at the foot. Everything on these is basically pegged into place. Nothing's really held in all that well. The arms are stiff, so they're not going anywhere, but I could imagine that maybe if they weren't so stiff, they'd be prone to fall out as well. Um, none of the areas where it connects really seems to be very sturdy, which I guess is kind of in the nature of this, seeing as it's kind of like swappable parts. Next up, we'll take a look at the creature. This one's even more exciting to me than the Wolfman. It doesn't hurt that these are two of my favorite Universal movie characters. I mean, my favorite Universal horror movie is Frankenstein, but character design, these two are definitely tops in my book. But they did a really good job getting him. They have the little stripes down the sides of his arms and legs for the scales. This extra chest appliance with all the detail, all the scales and stuff, and it continues onto the back with the fin here, fins on the head, they give him depth, nicely drawn on head, his scaly nasty feet, his claws, and both the hands and feet have extra fins coming off of them to give it that extra aquatic look. You can see here back here he has some more. Really cool figure. The way they made it's definitely different than the Wolfman too. You have this piece that actually exists as almost like a hair piece. So the top part of the creature's head. I mean, to some degree, it almost wouldn't have surprised me if they just gave us a head like this and painted the gills on the side. But it's really cool that they gave the extra three-dimensional part. And then if you were to take the head off, you could actually slide this appliance off, so you can see it's just a generic body, kind of like what the Wolfman had painted, but here it's covered up by this piece. I like that the fins are designed so that when you rotate the wrists, the fins will move around with it. It's a pretty nice touch. Your ball joint in the head here is limited because of this appliance. You really lose your up and down. I mean, if you try to go up and down, the head pops off, so it really just becomes a swivel which I could deal with. Also, same with the waist articulation. Pretty limited. On mine, this foot was really, really loose. It would not stay in for anything. Um, I had a little bit of super glue to it to try to make it a tighter fit. I think I did a little too good of a job. It's kind of stuck now, but they really don't have a lot of rotation in those either just because square leg and the little up the back it's gonna hit really quickly so you don't really get a whole lot of swivel out of those feet anyway overall I'm really happy with these little guys granted with the price that I paid for them theoretically before coupons they were about $20 for the set which is ridiculous markup I think in stores these went for about 
six, seven, eight dollars. I don't really remember. They're really cool though. I really like the black and white paint job on them. I think it gives it a really nice touch. It's more true to the movies. And just neat overall. I don't know if these things have converted me into being a Mini Mate collector, honestly. At the price point, like I was saying, six, seven, eight dollars, I mean, it's the price of a Marvel Universe figure. And they do have good articulation, they are cute, but they're not, I don't know if they're up to that level of being that expensive. I think it's a little overpriced for what they are. I might uh, go back later this fall, they're supposed to be releasing a Dracula set and a Frankenstein set, and if they do another black and white set like this, or pairing like this, I might go pick that one up. So I'll have the four guys. I'm a little curious to see if they ever will release a Mummy Mini Mate set. Diamond Select made these guys, and along with them they released the 6 inch or 7 inch horror universal figures. And we got, in this wave, the Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and the Mummy, but there was no Mini Mate support for the Mummy. So it'll be interesting to see if later on they go back and put one out. So when it comes down to recommending these guys, it's definitely a conditional thing. Can you get them for a good price? Because if you're paying $20 for these guys, you're getting ripped off. And the other condition is just, do you want these type of things in your collection? I'm kind of not really sure what to do with them. I'm probably going to put them in front of their 7-inch counterparts, but I really don't want to start like a whole separate little mini-mate area of my collection. So I really don't know, you know, if you're into collecting most of the stuff that I review, the big 7-inch horror figures and things like that, they're really going to be an odd fit. But still, they're cool, and like I said, if you can get them for a good price, definitely worth picking up. This has been another Outside the Box review. Stay tuned for more to come and probably in color next time.